April 15th, tax day across America, but I'm not upset. Co-staffer Heath Martin had a great hunt with some Kansas Rios, and I had another good hunt here at the Prove It Grand. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops, also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Muddy Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solution, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Redneck Hunting Blind, Dead Downwind, Record Rack, Foxworthy Outdoors, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Scent Master, Blood Sport Arrows, and Prime Bows by G5. Heath Martin, one of the original Growing Deer TV Pro Staffers, recently got his new G5 Prime Impact Bow. Heath has been a champion target archer and he really knows his way around bows and a bow shop. Heath takes the time to cut and fletch his own arrows and match everything perfectly and the results are impressive. With his new impact all tuned up and two cans of turkey tags in his pocket, he rode out to Kansas chasing some Rios. His first setup was a little slow and it might have something to do with that oil pump going thump, thump, thump in the background. He thought that to move down the road where his cameraman Clay had tagged a turkey last year. Old buddy Clay behind the camera killed his first ever bird with a bow, mind you, in this exact spot. Awesome, buddy. Awesome. Yes. We'll see what we can't do if this cow don't mess us up. I may have to run her off. Almost as soon as they'd gotten in the blind, they had Jake's approaching their decoys. <laughs> After that mob of Jake's left, a gobbler comes sneaking in quietly without making a sound. What do you think about oh that? God. <laughs> God. <laughs> that is a big bird. He ain't got a very good fan or a very good beard, don't look like, but he's got a full fan. Look at that, dude. I smoked him. That dude. <laughs> this dude, Prime Impact, flipped him over in his tracks, man. First day in Kansas, baby. Woohoo! Let me go out here. The kinetic energy of Heath's bow and that heavy arrow paired up with that T3 broadhead, did a whammy jammy on that bird as it only made it three yards. It's a good thing it was a short trailing job because as soon as Heath was back in the blind, those jakes returned and this time they brought a second long beard with them. Oh yeah, swinging beard. I gotta let him get over here where I can shoot him. <laughs> well, 
Well, it's April 4th in Kansas. We drove up last night, didn't get here to midnight. This is the first day on the ground. And I got to break in that new G5 Impact from Prime right this morning. I mean, we just put the thumping on two good birds in Kansas, dropped them both right in their tracks. So I'm excited to do some more hunting with that bow. Absolutely. Heath and Clay's knowledge of the area from past hunts really paid off as he tagged out in short order with his Kansas Rios. Last week when turkey season wasn't open in Missouri, Brian and I took a road trip down to Moss Hammock, which is by Montgomery, Alabama. They were kind enough to let us do a little turkey hunting in the mornings and work on the property management in the afternoon. Four is five and a half. There's a lot more to deer management besides holding a rack and measuring the inches when the season's over. I took an opportunity one afternoon to age all the jaw bones they collected from the deer they harvested this past season. This is deer 73 and uh, I call it three and a half. Guys at Moss Hammock had saved a bottom jaw from all the deer harvested, even their trophy bucks, which is very commendable. And then I look at those bottom jaws using a wear and replacement technique to estimate the age of each animal. Let's, let's go six and a half on 32. Estimating the age of all deer harvested, buck, does, and fawns is critical so you can really see where you've been and where the management program has the potential to go. Four and a half, 28 is four and a half. 37 is two and a half, guaranteed. 26 is a fawn. Four and a half, 65, 65. Moss Hammock guys had a really good year this year and that was in a horrendous drought. I can't wait to see the results this coming year, 2013, knowing that that sex ratio is balanced and rattling and grunt calls are gonna work great and there's plenty of bucks that are moving up to that four and a half year old age class. Brian and I had been working in Alabama, but the Reconyx were working every day we were gone, and we had great information where the turkeys wanted to strut. So this morning, Adam and I started up on Boomerang, which is a boomerang-shaped ridge right in the center of the Proving Grounds. We put a single hen decoy out because in the wooded area, I don't like to put a big strutter out thinking that toms may come over the ridge and see that and flare off. We set up about two or 300 yards away from where we estimated the birds were. I found as I get a little older, it's easier for me to call the birds in and get up too close and potentially bust them off and spend a long day wishing I hadn't been so aggressive. You notice that we're on this side of the saddle from where the birds are coming because if we pushed up close, they would have to peek over the edge and then see the decoy all at once, and that tends to cause gobblers to flare off if they get a big surprise too close. Just a few feet difference between Adam and I, he could see the tom strutting in the road before I could by several minutes. Once they got around a little bit, I could tell there were four hens, two mature toms, and one jake.
I could hear spitting and drumming and even the feathers dragging as the gobblers approached. About 45 or 50 yards out, we actually got to witness a mature tom breed a hen. It was clear that even though both birds mature, one was way dominant over the other. Hens would circle both birds, but only one gobbler would really cup his wings in the breeding position, while the other actually ignored a hen that got down on the ground in the breeding position right in front of him. All species of wildlife, from songbirds to turkey to deer, express dominance, especially around a receptive female. We'd enjoyed literally hours of watching these toms, but Ab and I both knew it was time, and he gave me the signal he was going to do a little call once they separated so that head would come up. When those Winchester double X's hit that turkey, there was no need for me to sprint out there because it was obvious his clock was clean and it was time to punch a tag. Like I said, I, I didn't know sure if it was gonna work out. I was enjoying it though. I was, you know, I wasn't excited. But then they got down here by this log and I said, well, it's just a matter of one of them stepping off to the edge here somewhere. They're gonna go right or left sometime. Little blunt had just walking around on these rocks all the time. Big mountain bird, big long beard, had a little beard right down low. So we're zooming in close. So you can see how big this beard is at the base. And a lot of broken hairs here. A lot of broken hairs, about two, three inches up. Huge base of this beard. You can tell he hasn't done, a, obviously we watched him breed, breed one hen. They haven't been doing a lot of breeding yet because it hasn't worn many feathers off. But later in the season, this will just be worn off here. That was an incredible display of turkey behavior this morning. He's a pretty good bird. No, point no I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, he's well over an inch on that outside curve. Opening day and one down. I'll be taking my father hunting the next couple of days. I hope you have a chance to get outside and enjoy creation with someone you love. Thanks for watching GrowingDeer.tv.